Hey everybody, this is GGB co-host Poppers, and you know what? I'm a little bit irritated. I, I really am, kind of. Uh, if you're watching this, I'm starting another sequence of filming, and I'll explain to you why. So, I'd already played, I already got halfway through this game. I, I'd done the commentary for about half the game I watched. So, I spent about an hour of my life into this, okay? So, I had to go on a walk, so I shut down the Xbox. And when I turned it on to record it tonight, uh, it glitched. And when you entered the third quarter, uh, the Bills had no timeouts, and the Eagles had only one timeout. So, it was confusing, to say the very least. And then I tried to restart it, and that time it said it was in the first quarter. So I thought they lost all the game. So I deleted all my commentary. And then I entered the game, and it was the third quarter and still had that dumb little thing where the Eagles only had one timeout and the Bills had none. So I just had to restart the game, which means I wasted about an hour and a half of my life trying to... I wasted half an hour trying to figure out an hour of it doing commentary and stuff when I could have been editing videos so I don't have to worry about it in the next couple of days. But here I am again on my own. So Marcus Green is back here. The bright side of watching half the game is I know a lot of these players' numbers. 82 is going to be Marcus Green. He's the number two receiver on this roster. Uh, he actually was pretty solid in the game, game the half of the game I watched before. And uh, here we come onto the field. We welcome Brandon Silver. So if you don't know, you didn't go with my rules and rosters. I only create three NFL players every year. Uh, but I have to do I, I do two for the Sun Belt. I have to make quarterbacks. I just quarterback's such a necessary position. I can't put a freaking wide receiver at a quarterback. It's just not gonna work. And I make Justin Yoon every year at a Notre a kicker out of Notre Dame because I really wish a BYU or Notre Dame or UMass or Army could produce a decent kicker in the NFL. I really do wish that. But uh, under center here. Now JD McKissick was not very helpful in the last game. They actually go run to Damian Willis, who's quickly tackled. But uh, Damian Willis is a player to watch. He was kind of productive. But I said it before, and I said it last game, okay? J.D. McKissick is arguably, not arguably, inarguably, their probably best player offensively, okay? Uh, they have one tight end on the field, but that tight end on the field is Gerald Everett. And he's probably their second best player offensively. Brandon Silvers throws it. He threw it to... Uh, is it, that might be Penny Hart. Uh, that's actually Gerald Everett. I didn't see the number. It's hard to know when I don't see the number. But the offensive line doesn't suck. And Penny Hart, actually, if you uh, uh, you didn't watch last game, because I kind of watched it myself, and then I deleted all the commentary like an idiot. But he was actually pretty solid. You can see Elijah McGuire is the other tight end there, so we'll see if he gets involved. He fires it. Ooh, that could have been a pick. And it was a nice... Play design to J.D. McKissick, and they're going to punt this ball relatively quickly to the FCS Division II, Division Three Bills. So they're taking the field here. I'm a little bit interested to see. Uh, so the offense came out very poorly, and I didn't expect that because last game, the offense for the Sun Belt was absolutely doing way better than I thought they would. They only ended up scoring six total points in the half, but uh, they drove it down the field very far. They could have had nine. They ended up uh, trying a field goal, and he, they they missed that. So onto the field comes Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo, I don't know what to say, because for the first quarter in that, that game, he was dominant, that game that I watched. He, he couldn't be stopped. He was thrown to Tyree Kill. The second quarter, though, he made some pretty crucial errors. He threw two picks. One of them was a bad pass to Dallas Goddard that was just way off target where Akeem Davis Gaither was able to dive and get the pick. The other one, he threw a jump ball to Tyree Kill, which was confusing to say the very least. And Josh Norman ended up picking off. Uh, but if you want to succeed here, the ground game worked phenomenally well with Austin Eckler. And that's what they bring here. They bring two tight ends on the field, and it's going to be Dallas Goddard and Robert Tanyan, if you're wondering. They actually go pass here. He throws it to Tyree Kill's wide open. This is going to be a touchdown. It's going to be... A 74-yard touchdown for Tyreek Hill. Right off the bat, you can see the impact Tyreek Hill makes to your ball club. 
And this is why the FCS Division II, Division Three Bills are actually kind of dangerous this year. Uh, Tyree kills an absolute phenomenal threat offensively. He has that superstar X factor, which, believe it or not, he didn't have last year. And uh, we've yet to see someone who gets a superstar X factor and it impacts the game. I think Harrison Smith got one in the Independent Chiefs game, but it really didn't matter that much. But 6 nothing early lead for the Bills. This is kind of what happened early on in that other game that I was talking about. Uh, they went up... <sighs> They went up like that really quickly. And this is why I've kind of been saying, uh, if you don't know, I have a running I have a running bet that whenever the Sun Belt finally wins this play in, this playoff game, I will lick a lamppost. And it will be the intro to my next video. If they win, I will lick a freaking lamppost, which I don't want to do. I don't want to lick a lamppost. I definitely don't want to do that. So it's it's a crazy bet for me to make, but it's just that's how insane I think it would be for the Sun Belt Eagles to upset the FCS Division Two Division Three Bills because they are better than them at basically every position. Position it really is actually I'll take it back. Not basically every position. Maybe kicker. Maybe Young Way Koo is better than Greg Zerline. I don't know. Maybe Sam Martin. Uh, but basically every position. FCS Division Two, Division Three Bills are better off the kickoff. And let's see if Marcus Green's going to be able to. He is going to be able to return this. He brings it out. He gets the blocks to bring it to the 24-yard line. That's what he did. So onto the field comes Brandon Silvers. They went quick three and out last time. I don't know why, Jerick. If I was the Sun Belt Eagles, I would be using my running backs like no one's business. Because here's the top three running backs for the team, and it's easily the best position for them. And it's J.D. McKissick, Jarek McKinnon, and Matt Breida. I mean, your receivers are Damian Willis, Marcus Green, and Penny Hart. These are 60 overall receivers. You have 77 overall running backs. I think Matt Breida is a 72 overall running back. You have some significantly good players at the running back position, and they don't use them other than J.D. McKissick. So they go run here, we'll draw to J.D. McKissick who gets nothing on the play. One rush for zero yards for J.D. McKissick. And, yeah, uh, this is what kind of happened last game. I understand the run game just kind of gets stuffed. I mean, the offensive line just isn't good enough at run blocking. Now, it did a pretty solid job last game of protecting Brandon Silvers, and Brandon Silvers did a very good job of getting the ball out in time and accurately. He throws it over the middle, and uh, that has not been the start this early on for Brandon Silvers. That could have been an easy first down if it was even somewhat accurate. Uh, but this is kind of what you've got to expect from Brandon Silvers. You're going to get some good plays, but again, this guy is not good. <laughs> he is not a good quarterback by any means. Second worst in the entire game, only by his backup quarterback that is worse for him. He has time to scan the field. He throws it underneath to J.D. McKissick, who actually spins. He got his way to the first down, fought his way. Actually, that's not J.D. McKissick. That's Penny Hart, I believe. And... First down for Penny Hart. And you can see, I actually think Penny Hart might be the most underrated part of this offense. Uh, he really is solid. He, he's a way better receiver than I expected him to be. He, he's brought versatility in, in his game. Marcus Green is probably their fastest receiver offensively. He's probably their biggest deep threat, although I wouldn't be throwing it deep. Uh, looks like it's a one tight end set this time with Gerald Everett. And this is probably their best set offensively. They go run here. Ooh, he's a big hole, J.D. McKissick, but he only gets about seven yards before getting tackled, or six yards as they count it. Uh, John Franklin Myers makes a tackle, and he was big in the playing game, and he was big in the in the other half of the game I watched. He got two sacks in the other game that I watched. He had two sacks, I believe, in the playing game. So you know, watch for John Franklin Myers tonight. So Brandon Silvers goes shotgun here. He... Yeah, they do a little screen, but he's, he's sacked. He is just quickly sacked by David Onyemata. David Onyemata is weirdly... He's, he's the third defensive tackle, but I believe he is the best pass rusher of the defensive tackles. So that's what you're going to see on passing downs. You're going to see John Franklin Myers come in at the rush GT position, and David Onyemata comes in at well, as well. And that's why Matthew Judon's on the edge, who's normally a linebacker. It's just the, it's the rushing play. He's the best rusher for these this... FCS Division Two, Division Three Bills. So, third and ten, early third down is another important one. You don't want to go down fourteen nothing. I said this in the other game, and they went down fourteen nothing. But 
Gerald Everett's on the field. He's probably your best target here, although Marcus Green's also very solid. He has time, but he's under pressure, and he does get sacked. You have to eventually get rid of it all. John Franklin Myers already making his impact. <laughs> I feel like I can tell the future the way I'm doing this. I mean, uh, I just I talked about how good John Franklin Myers was a little bit ago. I expected more out of Keen Hicks, if I'm going to be honest. He's a really good pass rusher in real life. I guess that offensive tackle is just doing a great job. Really, the offensive tackles has done great jobs, right? Matthew Judon and Akeem Hicks are both very solid pass rushers from the outside. And the last game, you didn't hear their, their names at all. The only thing that could happen was a guy getting up the middle. So that's what you really have to focus on if you're the Sun Belt Eagles. John Franklin Myers and David Anyamata kind of kills you. Let's see if you can, through the defense, maybe you, well, let's see if Tyra Kill can do something special on the return. He gets it up to the 50-yard line. Let's see if the defense can not let up a touchdown on the first play. Now, Terry Kills, by the way, you only need three 20-plus yard plays to, act to activate his little superstar X-Factor ability, which I would want if I was the Bills. Jerry, try to test that out. I think this is this is why I think the playing game between the FCS Division II, Division III Bills and the Big 12 was huge. And it was kind of just, it's like, Big 12, what are you doing when you blew that? they blew that huge lead they had against the FCS Division II, Division III Bills? Because that game's really important because now the FCS Division II, Division III Bills are in position. If they win this game, which I'm going to go on a limb and say they do, Austin Eckler run up the middle, big play. Ooh, but a big hit by, I believe, Jeremy Reeves. What a play. J.J. Oh, Wilcox. But, but what a play. Now, they ended up letting him get 13 yards before hitting him, but still a nice hit by J.J. Wilcox. But what I was saying before was basically uh, they're in position now. If they win this game, they draw the Pac-12, which is, if you look at it, there's a pretty sizable overall difference between the Pac-12 and the, uh, the SEC. But J.J. Garoppolo goes under center here. I'm going to, I guess, a play action. They actually go run here to Austin Eckler, who – is able to get five yards on the play, uh, four yards on the play, actually. they were, But the math added up to five, but never mind. Tracy Walker with his first tackle of the ball game. Tracy Walker's actually a decent player and probably one of their better defensive players, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, if they want to win, and I guess Sunbelt wants to win, maybe, <laughs> Demario Davis has got to be a part of it. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo goes shotgun here. He fires it over the middle, easy completion to Dallas Goddard, I believe Akeem Davis Gaither was on the coverage on that play, but again, yeah, I mean, it just seems super easy, and uh, this, this is why the, again, the Mac's going to give you somewhat of a fight, because the offense is so absolutely scary, and Big Ben Roethlisberger, Kareem Hunt, uh, Julian Edelman, Corey Davis, Antonio Brown, and Kenny Galladay, so they have to go throw here, they Pass it to Tyreek, uh, to Adam Thielen, actually. Adam Thielen's the one that makes his catch. Brings it about 18 yards for a first and goal. And it looks like the CS Division Two, Division Three Bills are again going to sleepwalk for a touchdown, which I didn't actually expect. If you watched last year's game, the defense really did a great job of stopping the offense last year. I don't know how else to say it. They forced them to a good amount of field goals instead of touchdowns and they missed some of those field goals and kept their team in the game with their defense until about the fourth quarter when they ran away with it so they go under center here i think it might be another run with austin eckler don't be surprised by the way if john james robinson sees the field go pass here he has time but he's getting pressured and it's gonna be an incomplete pass good pressure up the middle by Mr. 98, which is Steve McClendon. Now, Steve McClendon's actually a decent... Actually, is that a 96? I don't know. Steve McClendon, I believe, is the guy that got pressure there. Steve McClendon's actually a really solid player. I like a lot of what I've seen of Steve McClendon so far. Two tight ends set with Dallas Scholar and Robert Tony. Let's see if they run the ball with Austin Eckler. They said to pass it again. He has time. He throws it. Touchdown to Mr. Tyreek Hill. Second touchdown of the day for Tyreek Hill. And in the play-in game, Tyreek Hill had four receiving touchdowns. So, uh, yeah, he is pretty dominant. <laughs> but, yeah, I just, I don't know. I <laughs> think you'd be able to cover Tyreek Hill in the red zone because uh, that's not what he's known for. But they aren't able to do that. <laughs> but it's going to be probably a 14-0 game quickly. And what I was saying before was, 
there's a lot of difference between the Pac-12 and the SEC, and this is why the playing game between them, those two attendants, has to be so important. Not to mention, you probably get a cakewalk through this game. You just got a sleepwalk. Uh, <laughs> ask Big 12 fans. They did not get a sleepwalk against the Mac. They Mac gave them basically everything they could handle. Uh, made a three-point game at one point before they kind of crumbled. But it's still... It, it's, it turned out to be such a huge game. Now, again, every year a team that played in the wild card round makes it to the next round. Now, the Big 12 did it the first year I did it, and they made it all the way to the Super Bowl. Last year, the FCS Division II, Division Three upset the Pac-12 in overtime. They made it to the uh, conference championship before falling to the SEC. So, I'd expect at least the F uh, one of the FCS Division II, Division Three or the Big 12 to upset their respective teams. Marcus Green to return this one. He gets it out to about the twenty yard line before doing a weird he did a weird little juke there and got just got tackled by Matthew Judon. And it puts his team in not great field position, twenty two yard line when he could add at the twenty five. But Brandon Silvers to bring this thing out and it's just it's not been going great offensively. Literally everything you could hope that goes wrong has gone wrong so far early for the Sun Belt. I guess technically there's been no turnovers, so you could put that on it, but your defense has given up a touchdown every single possession. Uh, your offense has, I believe, maybe uh, they've gotten one first down, and that's it. So you'd like a little bit more offensive production. You're a run here to buy to Jaden McKissick. Uh, they don't actually go pass here. He throws it to, I believe that's Penny Hart. Now, Penny Hart, oh, no. Ah, ah, you hope your he's back quickly if you're the Sun Belt Eagles because I don't know if I told you. I think I told you guys in the Wilson roster, they have six total offensive linemen, six. So, again, the offensive lineman's going to come in for him, uh, but they have six total offensive linemen ahead to move running backs and a safety and a kicker to fill out the roster. And you don't want Will Lutz. Playing at the left tackle position, your team will die. Brandon Silvers will die. <laughs> this isn't good at all, but luckily, uh, they still have that one player. Okay, they run to Jeannie McKissick. That turned out to actually work out really well. Jeannie McKissick gets, uh, but he gets enough for a first down. Three rushes, 14 yards. He's actually been more productive than he was last week. Now was McKissick on the field and at the sidelines at the same time. He's an absolute wizard of a man. Uh, but that was a nice block. Nice blocks by the offensive line. He gets it first down, which is important. Kendall Lamb, he was already on the field. So I don't know who took the field exactly, but first and ten. Who took over for DeMar Dodson? I don't know. I don't exactly care. So first and ten, they get their second first down of the ball game. Uh, shotgun here for Brandon Silvers. He... Running back splits out, so he, he threw it. He threw it incomplete to, I believe, 81. That's Penny Hart again. So Penny Hart has been his favorite target early on. But i got to say, I'd get it to Gerald Everett. Gerald Everett is a good playmaking tight end, and I'd be interested. They're, they're tight ends. I mean, Elijah McGuire worked significantly well last time, but he goes screen here. And he has a decent amount of running room up in front of him, but unfortunately he just kind of runs into a player. Brings up a third and five. Got about five yards on that play. So, yeah, J.D. McKissick, maybe they'll involve him a little bit more in the passing game. That's what the Redskins utilized him in real life at. Looks like they have the right people on the field. Actually, bring two tight end set. That's not the smartest thing, but Elisha McGuire wasn't unproductive last game. A little bit of a matchup nightmare considering he's a running back, and he's listed at tight end. So they go... No, J.D. McKissick's basically uncovered, but they snap the ball. He throws it to a wide the heck open. I believe a, was, was that Penny? Yeah, it wasn't Penny Hart. Definitely not. Marcus Green's first catch of the walk game, guys. And watch out for Marcus Green. He is probably their fastest receiver. He is the shiftiest receiver. Well, Penny Hart has a knack of finding open holes and kind of picking up first downs, and that's how he's going to be useful. Penny Hart is a... He's a pretty quick, I mean, uh, now Marcus Green's a pretty quick receiver. That's why he's on the kickoff returns. And he's a really, he's a really solid receiver for this team. Now, of course, if you're the Sun Belt, you're missing Albert Wilson. Unfortunately, he was injured and couldn't play. 
this year, which kind of sucks because he's always been the go-to target. Two tight ends set here. It's going to be interesting if they go run here because Elijah McGuire does not provide much blocking ability. They do go run up the middle. And, uh, ooh, big hole, big hole for J.D. McKissick. Almost gets a first down on his own, but averaging six yards per carry is McKissick. Second and inches. Do you risk it? Do you risk the biscuit if you're uh, the Sunbelt Eagles? I mean, what do you have to lose? You, you're really not expected to compete in this game at all. Uh, maybe a little play-action pass, but they actually go shotgun here with uh, J.D. McKissick. We'll see if it's going to be a run. They go, do go run here with J.D. McKissick. Who's big hole, big hole down the sidelines. And gets it all the way down to about the 14-yard line before being tackled. And J.D. McKissick has been insanely productive here early on. In the passing game, he has five yards. Sure, not, not a big deal, but at least he got a little bit involved. He had zero in the last game at halftime. And maybe the Sunbelt Eagles weren't able to get a touchdown all of the other half that I watched. And they were close a couple times, but they had to settle for field goals with Young White Koo. The ideal thing is to score a touchdown. I mean, the offense... I mean, if they keep running with J.D. McKissick, they have the opportunity to because then you can throw it short and intermediate routes to other people. So they bring a little blitz here, the FCS Division 2, Division 3 Bills do, and, uh, ooh, at least he gets it out. <laughs> it would have been a sack otherwise, but Brandon Silvers keeps it a second and ten. Just the thing with Brandon Silvers that I don't find very good, if his guys aren't open, he doesn't go through his reads quickly at all. He just kind of keeps backing up until his the other team sacks him, or he's able to get it off like that. And he has it doesn't really have the ability to throw the ball away very well. So he throws it short underneath to uh, eleven, which is Damian Willis. So first catch of the ball game for really Damian Willis. He had that rush earlier, uh, but watch out for Damian Willis too. He's also a player that is productive enough. He can get open, and uh, he does the slants very well. Third and one. Let's see if they go run up the middle with J.D. McKissick. I would, the way he's been productive early on. Uh, but let's see what they decide to do here. They go pass. He throws it to the end. Touchdown! Touchdown to Mr. Marcus Green. First receiving touchdown of the ball game for Marcus Green. It's going to be a seven-point ball game, my friends. They scored. If they make the extra point, they will score more points in this first quarter than it did all the half that I watched them. Uh... But, yeah, Marcus Green scoring the big touchdown here for this team. And, whoa, yeah, Marcus Green making a big-time play. Let's see. As long the long snapper for this team isn't exactly what you would call good. He's, like, fifth overall. So it's an accurate long snap. Kicks up and good for Young Way Koo. What I've noticed by Young Way Koo in these – Two or so games I watched him again. I only watched him for a half this time, and I watched like five-minute quarters last time. He doesn't have the biggest leg in this game. Now, not to say he doesn't have a pretty solid leg in real life, but in Madden, he doesn't exactly have a strong leg. Uh, you can't make him kick long field goals. It's just that's not what I would do. Now, with Greg Sterling, you could always take the risk. He has a huge leg. Maybe he's not as accurate as Young Way too, but he has a huge leg. He's a massive... Massive leg, but Tyree kills off the kick. They cut this ball down into a seven-point lead. I mean, let's see if the defense can stop them, though. So far, Tyree Kill has had his at way, but it's going to be the first time they probably don't have uh, what, Tyree Kill to return this kick. He returned one for a touchdown in the other game, but this time he's tackled at the 25-yard line. Uh, but two touchdowns already. Now, Tyree Kill's yet to have another 20-plus-yard play since that first one we watched, but... Uh, again, uh, yeah, he killed. He kind of killed the corner on that one. He was he absolutely murdered that corner. Uh, poor dude. Poor Sullivan. <laughs> yeah, normally you don't want to match up. I don't understand why they're not matching Josh Norman or double teaming him at all times. Personally, I double team him, uh, or at the very least, put Josh Norman your best corner on him. And Josh Norman's not great. Seventy-eight overall corner, I think. Uh, but I mean. Yeah, you could have worse. It could be a worse situation for you. You don't want it to be worse. So, shotgun here with Dallas Goddard on the field. This is probably going to be their standard formation to go run here with Austin Eckler, who has space and is going to try and bulldoze, but not really get his way for about 10 yards. And uh, he's been really productive here. <laughs> Three rushes for 27 yards. 
uh, almost at, uh, that's averaging nine yards per carry, if you're wondering. Uh, you should probably hand it to Austin Eckler a little bit more, but everyone has been so productive here early on. Tyreek Hill, again, has already has two receiving touchdowns in the first quarter, so you got to keep everyone happy. Uh, Adam Thielen has gotten a couple catch, uh, about one catch, really, in terms of Dallas Goddard, so Let's see what they do here. They go shotgun. Another run here up the middle with Austin Eckler, who's tackled by, I believe, that is Steve McClendon. And Steve McClendon's made some big-time plays here in this game so far. And he is one of my favorite players offensively. Uh, I mean, defensively for the Sun Belt Eagles. Obviously have Demario Davis, but Steve McClendon is probably my second favorite player. He's a very good defensive tackle for them. And uh, if they could only build up the other positions, then maybe they'd have a team around them <laughs> if Demario Davis and him. Uh, King David Gazer is getting better. Okay, so he goes snap here. He has a lot of time, although 99 just turns around. Uh, again, pass to Tyree Kill. Again, he's thrown five passes. I like, completed five passes. I believe three of them. Yeah, three of them to Tyree Kill. So three receptions, 91 yards, two touchdowns so far for Tyree Kill. Um, start doubling him. <laughs> no one else has really been able to produce outside of Austin Eckler on the ground offensively through the air. Uh, I think I take the risk. I take the risk that uh, Adam Thielen and Cooper Cup beat us through the air. Now, they can beat you through the air, but I'm a little bit worried about Tyree Kill. So it's just shotgun here for Jimmy Garoppolo. They hand off with Austin Eckler, who cuts up the middle, gets about seven yards on the ground, brings up a second and three. It's kind of ruined his stats a little bit. He's no longer averaging – he's only averaging seven yards per carry now instead of eight, 99. So that was two plays. It's killing his stats, but second and three here. 45-yard uh, line of the Sunbelt Eagles. And the Sunbelt Eagles, you can maybe let them get this first down, but you can't let them get any more if you want to stop them with no points. Two tight ends set here with Robert Tunyon and uh, Dallas Goddard. They go four five-man rush here by the Bills, and just fire it to Robert Tunyon, who picks up 15 yards, <laughs> probably 10 of them after the catch. Uh, huge player Robert Tunyon, who really wasn't all that productive last game. And I really haven't seen yet to see a game where the number two tight end is somewhat productive. Now, with the Chiefs, Tyler Eifert was a little bit productive for that team. Uh, but the Big 12, uh, no. <laughs> no one else other than Mark Andrews at tight end could, was very productive. Uh, I couldn't name the max number two tight end. Uh Actually, it's not true. Jordan Aikens has been rather productive. Uh, but shotgun here for Jimmy Garoppolo. I think it might be a handoff. No, not a handoff to Austin Eckler. He does have time, though. He throws it to Austin Eckler in the flats, and he's quickly tackled. Picks up about no gain on that play. A nice play there by that defense. One reception for zero yards for Austin Eckler, and that's tackled by Tracy Walker. And like I said before, Tracy Walker is an underrated part of this defense. Now, I understand the defense isn't great, uh, but Tracy Walker's an underrated part of that not great defense. <laughs> Let's see if they go run here with uh, Austin. Actually, it looks like James Robinson in the backfield, not Austin Eckler. They, they go pass here. He has a lot of time. He throws it to wide open Cooper Cup. He picks about 15, 14, and no, 15 on the reception. Brings it to 14-yard line. And uh, really, if you're the defense, you're hoping and praying that at some point you can force him to a field goal and just hope your offense can outscore them. Uh, that's not the ideal move. <laughs> Definitely not, but the problem is there's too many weapons here offensively for the Sunbelt Eagles to really take away. Who do you decide to take away? If you really focus on uh, Tyree Kill, then Adam Thielen and Cooper Cup are also killer parts of this offense. So it really depends on who you go after. Blitz here by the Sunbelt Eagles. He's able to get it to Cooper Cup. Getting about 11 yards on that play. Brings up a first and goal from the three-yard line. A uh, minute and a half remaining in this first quarter, so this first episode's coming to an end, ladies and gentlemen. But if you told me it was a 7 14 ball game, I would be a little bit confused because I'd be like, I already watched the first quarter. What do you mean it's a 7 14 ball game? It was it? But bring Kyle Yeschek out the field for this play. Let's see if they go run here with Austin Eckler. They do. Pumps it up the middle. Touchdown! I don't believe that's Austin Eckler. It looks like James Robinson into me. Uh, but it is Austin Eckler. 21. Seven, likely after pen, extra point pending. Uh, but, yeah, if you're going to send Belt Eagles offense, you just you kind of, uh, personally, 
if I was the Sun Belt Eagles, I know off they're not gonna think of this, uh, but I would try an onside every time if I score a touchdown, because I mean, uh, the chances of you getting an onside are probably better than you stopping the FCS Division Two Division Three offense, because it's just it's not going to happen. It's just it's not likely you have. I mean, the offense by itself. I mean. Sunbelt Eagles probably couldn't stop the MAC offense or the Conference USA offense. Uh, but this offense is particularly potent because you have players like Tyree Kill, Adam Thielen, Cooper Cup, Dallas Goddard, and not to mention Austin Eckler, who's a very killer running back through the air. Not to mention on the ground, he's very shifty. Uh, but yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard. Now the FCS Division Two, Division Three Bills defense kind of let me down last drive because. Statistically, um, the defense should have dominated, which makes you a little bit worried when Aaron Rodgers and uh, Keenan Allen and Christian McCaffrey take the field against you if you're going to be able to stop them if you can't stop the Sun Belt offense. But kicks it, kicking off, I think Mark Screen's going to have a chance to just, no, he's going to take a knee in the back of the end zone, and onto the field comes Brandon Silvers. Brandon Silvers has been... A productive quarterback so far. Now, the first two drives, he made some significant mistakes. He really did. Uh, he didn't get the ball out on time. There's a lot of things you could t say went poorly for Brandon Silvers. And I think you wouldn't be mistaken to say these things. Uh, but he turned them all the way around in the third drive. And I think they need a similar drive on this, this, this thing. I think we'll probably not be able to see the end of this first drive in the... In this drive in the end of the episode, they bring out, I believe, Elijah McGuire for this play. They go run here up the middle to J.D. McKissick. Been rather productive for them, so why not? Four-yard run by J.D. McKissick. Both running backs here early on, Austin Eckler and J.D. McKissick, have been really productive, which I didn't expect after the last half where, oh, well, sure, Austin Eckler was rather productive. Uh, but J.D. McKissick was not. He was quickly stuffed on most of his plays. Best play was probably about four-yard rush. So, shotgun here. And Brandon Silver is just going to throw it. He throws it in the middle. Completion. And it's a first down to, uh, I believe, Penny Hart. So, again, Penny Hart, I, I believe, is an underrated. I've said it before. I'll say He's an underrated part of this offense. By the way, Aluakon made the tackle. Watch out for that name, Aluakon. You're going to see it a lot. Although, also the name Patrick Omuasor. Don't be surprised if you see that name a lot, too. Very good tackler. Fits in the same role kind of as Nick Kwiatkowski. And, uh, ooh, not a great run there. But this is going to be the end of the first quarter, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed my commentary. I hope you enjoyed the Conference Champions Series so far. But, hey, everybody, this is GGB, Colossal Barber, saying join us tomorrow, and adios, amigos.